Angular 19.2.0 has been released and this video is not going to be what you should do, but I would rather go into a completely different direction and tell you what you should absolutely not do with the new HTTP resource feature. Hey everyone, my name is Mohammed Asan. I'm a Google developers expert in Angular and an author of two worldwide published books based on Angular. And my job here is to make sure that you become a better and smarter Angular developer. With that said, let's get into it. So about nine hours ago, you can see that we have a new release V19.2.0 and one of the biggest features that landed here is the experimental HTTP resource. And in this video, we are going to look at what you should absolutely not do with this HTTP resource. For this example, we are going to use the same HTTP resource or ng HTTP resource repository that we have worked on before. But you should be checking out this particular branch that's called don't do it dash dash start. Once you do so, you're on the same level as me. And the first thing that we want to do is to do ng update because this repository was created with the RC dash zero which you can see right here or rc0 and we are actually going to go to 19.2.0 which is the stable version the first thing that you would want to do is to update the angular cli and for that i'm just going to run ng update at angular slash cli and i'm going to just skip through updating both these particular packages all right so what i did was i first updated the angular cli i did a git add dot and then basically committed it because otherwise you can't really run another ng update you need the repository to be clean and then i just ran this and yeah you can see where we are right now so you should be at the same place now i'm just gonna run npm start so we can serve the application on localhost 4200 and there we go you can see that the application should be running now and now if i refresh you can see that the application is running if i click different users you can see that we get the to do's of the particular user we are clicking now we'll implement a feature which essentially would try to add a new to do in the list of to do's and if you go to the documentation of json placeholder you will see that down below we do have all these resources and if i go to to do's we can get to do's but we can also also post to the same URL and that will create a new to do. It will not technically create a real to do, but it will give us a response that says, okay, 201, everything created. And that is what we are looking for. So the first thing that I would want to do is to go and create this UI where this new to do could be added. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the resource for this as well. So I'm going to go to to do service here. And then first we will create the new to do resource. And again, I'm putting it out there. This is not what you should do, but I'm still going to try to show you what is the tendency of us developers when we have this new API, what we would be thinking by default to do. And then I'll tell you why not to do it. So we'll go here and we'll say new to do resource. Now we're trying to say that we're going to post with a resource, whereas we should not be doing it. So I'm going to say HTTP resource here and this particular resource when we create a particular to-do, it essentially returns a to-do, a single to-do. Here, it returned an array of to-do. So that's the difference between those. And here inside, I'm gonna just copy all of this and paste it like this because we do need the user here and all of these checks. But instead of just getting this, we are going to do a post towards this. So how do we do that? Instead of returning a single URL, we can essentially use post because there's a lot of APIs out there which get the data or provide you to get the data, but using the post method. A lot of reasonings include that when you are doing a get request, you are sending the query parameters in the URL itself, which can be exposed to the outside world. When you send post, you are basically sending as body parameters, which is not in the URL, of course. And this also allows you to not bookmark certain things as well, because then the body params are not bookmarked at all. So here, instead of setting a string, you can essentially say URL and URL can be this. And then here you can send the body parameters just like this, right? And the body params or the type would be also decided by the content type header, right? So what you can do here is that you can also say header and here you can say content type and here you can say application slash JSON. Again, to remind, we're trying to see what we should not do. So here we have the HTTP resource for the new to-do resource created and here we need the body parameters. How do we get those body parameters? Well, we create another signal here. So here we're going to say new to-do input just like this. For now, I'm going to create this like a signal. So I'm going to say we have a signal here and the signal signal is going to be of type to do. So here we're going to have a to do or you can say, yeah, let's call it to do. And then we essentially say this is also possible to have as null. So we save it like null. And then what we do here is in the body, we send the to do. So here we can say this dot new to do input, just
just like this so we are going to send it we're also going to make sure that we don't really do anything at all if we don't have the new to do input or if we don't have the user so here we can also say or if we don't have this dot new to do input then we basically return undefined from here as well good now that we have both of these things in place we can go ahead and start writing the ui so if we go to our html here you're going to see that we have two sections we have the aside and then we have this div the aside is what we see on the left and the ul is what we have on the right side so what i'm going to do is just above this ul we are going to create this new to do input so we're going to go here we're going to add a form here and inside the form we are going to have two things we're going to have an input here and then we'll also have the button so let's start with the input here and then we'll also have a button that says add or just says add in this case now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some classes so we're going to have a border slate 900 we're going to have px3 py 1.5 we're going to have border rounded or rounded md essentially and that's pretty much it we are also going to copy these and add this to the button as well and we are also going to provide some classes here for example we can say bg amber 400 and then when you hover it's going to be bg amber 600 let's say we're going to also have a transition and duration 200 because buttons should always have cursor pointer like this now that we have this let's check it out if i go here you can see that we have the input we have the button they don't look really good so we're going to add some more styles so we're going to have a rounded md here as well we're going to have on the form we're going to have a flex we're also going to have width full we are going to have gap four items center and if you look at them now they should look a bit nicer so if i do like this you can still see that they don't really look as good so on the input i'm gonna give this a flex one so this takes as much space as possible and i'm also gonna say this is border and not border now if i look at them this looks pretty much nice i'm also gonna add a margin bottom just like this and i'm also gonna add a placeholder so here we can say placeholder add new to do and now you can see here we have the placeholder we have the button everything looks nice now let's actually implement the form logic so here i'm gonna go and add a new signal so here i can say new to do input is gonna be a signal and this is going to be a signal of empty string just like this then i'm gonna go and import the forms module so here i can say forms module and we are importing the forms module from angular forms just like this now that we have this we can go to our html and on the input we can give two things we are gonna have to give the name so here we can say name and here we can say new to do input something like this and then what we do here is we can give this an ng model so here ng model and here we're going to give this new to do input binding it like this now when we submit we're gonna have to use ng submit and then we'll call something like add new to do so we'll call a function basically and then this buttons type should be submit so when we click it it submits it now that we have this let's save this we're gonna go to our app component ts and here we are going to create this add new to do function once we have this we are going to retrieve the value from the new to do input and we are going to set the to do service new to do input when we set this since we are using this inside the to do resource it's going to automatically trigger this whole request that's what we want so here i'm gonna go ahead and say this dot to do service dot and here we have new to do input which is in the service and here we are going to do a set and here i'm gonna give an object so here i'm gonna say completed is gonna be false and here i'm also gonna say this dot or not this dot but title is gonna be this dot new to do input and now here i want to make sure that this value exists so here i'm gonna also add a check so here i can say something like cons we can say title equals and here we can say this and if we don't have title then there's no point of doing anything at all so if no title then we go ahead and do something like this so return we can also check something actually so we're gonna actually shorten this down to say this is gonna be the title and we also need the id here which we are not going to provide so we need to change the type of this new to do input so if i go here instead of saying this is a to do we are going to say this is a partial of to do and you're probably familiar with this so we don't have to provide every single thing so we're gonna say completed and title and this is what we are providing and we save this now if i go to to do service and when we change this it should still send all of those things together now let's have a look so if i go here i'm gonna actually open the inspector here we're gonna go to to do service and we are going to put a breakpoint just like this and then we'll also look at the form submission so here i'm gonna go and say app.component.ts and we're going to put a link here now if i say new to do something like this and hit enter you can see that the submit gets triggered if i go down here you can see we have the title named new to do if i go further down you can see now we are setting the input as soon as we set the title and the completed for this the resource triggers automatically which is the reactive part that we are looking for now we get the user and we get the new to do input so you can see we have the user here and we also have the new to do 
input as well. Now that we have this, this is going to make an API call. So I go to network tabs, I clear this. And if we hit play, you're going to see that we do make a network call here, which is 200. OK, this got triggered automatically. But let's have a look at this one. So here it sends a call of options and says no content. And here we are sending a get call. That is because we never specified the method here. So we should also say this is a method. And here we have post. I forgot about that. Now that we have this, let's try this again. So I'm going to play. I'm going to quickly go here. And then if now I try and say new to do hit enter, you can see that we go here, we hit play and I'm going to clear the network tab. And now if I hit play, you see that we sent this particular call, which is the post call and to the same URL that we mentioned. And if I go here to payload, you can see we sent the completed and the title. And in the response, we got back this. We got a random ID and we got the user ID, the title, blah, blah, blah. So we've gotten all of those things, but there are a few things that's missing here in terms of UI UX. One of the things is that this should have been reset to empty and we should see something here. This is where things get tricky. And this is where I say don't use HTTP resource for posting or mutations. Why? Because the only way or one of the potential ways of doing this or making this happen is to find a workaround, which is not always good. So this is the HTTP resource, which is right now reactively being triggered whenever the new to do input is changing, which in itself is bad, but it's a way to do things. This is where things get tricky. And this is where you start to realize that the way we are doing posting a new to do is just going to get us in trouble because of the practices that we are using. So just to repeat so far, what we are doing is that we have a signal on the basis of which we react and we basically create a new to do. But the problem is whenever we get a response from this, how do we add that information into the to do's resource? Now, as I said, this video is about telling you what not to do. So here, what you should not be doing is there's an option that you could use in this particular object and that is called parse. Now, what you can do here is that or what you should not do here is provide a second argument to this function. So the first one is actually the function that returns an object for the HTTP call. The second argument here is you can provide options which contain something called parse. Before this landed into 19.2 stable, this was actually called map, but this has changed into parse now, which essentially tells that if you wanted to look at the response and transform it, you can use the parse method. And here you get the value. When you look at the type of the value, you're going to see that this val is of type unknown because we don't really know what kind of response this would basically send us back. So we will try to sort of look into the transformation of it. So let's make this a bit nicer like this. And now you see that the val here is still unknown. What we can do here is that we can take out the value and then we can add that to the resource. So here, what I could do is I can say something like val equals, or you can say something like new to do equals val as to do. So you are basically typecasting it. And then we do something like uh, this dot to do resource dot. And here you update. So you'll get a list of the existing to do's and then you basically add the new one on top of it. So here you can return an array here. We'll have new to do. And here you can say dot 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 list. And we're going to make sure that the list is there. So it can be an array of to do or it could be undefined. Now, one of the things that you could always do instead of having this to do or undefined is that you can provide this a default value. So here on the second argument of this to do resource or to do resource, I can say default value and I can simply say empty array. Now we'll not have any issue down here because the list is never undefined. We have to do always. Now that we have this, we essentially can send this value back as well. Or we could finally say that we are going to return the new to do here. So new to do. And there we go. Now we have this functionality done. So I'm going to save this. And the second thing we discussed about was to reset the input. So here we have the new input here. So after we have set this value, we can essentially go here and we can say this dot new to do input dot set. And here we can just make it empty. Now setting this does not change anything at all because this is local to app component. If we change this guy, which is the new to do input in the service that basically triggers this new to do resource. So just to keep this in mind, now that we go to our application and we try out something new before that, I'm going to go and press control P or you can press command P on Mac OS. And I'm going to try to find the file 
file. So here I'm going to say to do service dot ts and let's put a breakpoint in the new to do resource and also inside the parse as well, just like this. Then we are also going to go to app component ts and put a breakpoint right here and right here. Now we can say this is new to do. And if I hit add, you're going to see that it comes here and it sets the new to do input of the service. This should trigger the request or the resource here. So it's going to take the user, go ahead, and now it's going to make the call. If we go to network, we can clear all the network requests. If I hit play now, go to network, you can see we already got this response and this is the response that we have gotten so this is the new to do that we have gotten now if we look at the parts here the value here is the response that we have gotten from the api you can see it's the same exact thing now it goes ahead and it tries to update the list of to do so it updates the list and now it returns the new to do that we have just gotten now if i hit play you're gonna see that here we got the new to do a hey! and we also reset this input as well now if i try to go to something else for example if i go to erwin howell it's gonna go and make the new call it's going to get the response from the new user and now you can see we still see this new to do let's try switching so if i go here you can see still we have the new to do here and if i go here still new to do and you can see whatever i fetch essentially gets the new to do on top of it and sometimes it doesn't really get the to do as well now it gets it so something is going weird here let's see if i enable the breakpoints now if i go here you're gonna see that the new to do resource is being triggered why is that the reason why we are having this issue is that once we are done with our updating the to do's resource we never reset this guy the new to do input so the ideal case should be that i'm adding a new to do i hit the add button it makes the http call and then it sets this particular input to null or it resets it so it never calls this again which is really really important and you can already see that this is becoming messy i don't like how i'm coding this and that's why we should not be using resource for any mutation but i'm still gonna go ahead and show you how to do it so i'm gonna go ahead and here right after i update the to do's resource i'm also going to set the new input so here this dot new to do input dot set and here i'm going to pass null so we don't have any value in it and if it re-triggers it it comes here and then just goes back and doesn't really trigger this again so i'm going to refresh now and let's see what happens i'm going to remove the breakpoints and we are going to test like a user and not a developer so i'm going to refresh now and then we are going to go and click the first one click the second one click the third one and these seem to be fine now i say new to do and if I hit add now, you're going to see that it's going to make the API call. It's going to reset the input and we have the new to do here. Now I'm going to check the breakpoint. So if I go to another user right now, you're going to see that we still come to this new to do resource. The ideal case should be we should never come here even. But since it's a weird approach, a workaround, we come here anyways. And if I go down, this new to do input should be basically null in this case, since we already reset it the last time. And this should go inside and return undefined just like this. So now it's not going to mess around with other users so if i go to another user it comes here again but since the new to do input is nothing it essentially goes and returns undefined now i can add a new to do here so i can say best to do and now that it comes here it's gonna have the new to do input value because we already set it in the previous code from here and now it goes further it has the user and it also has the new to do input so if it goes forward you can see now it's gonna make the api call then it's gonna come to parse and then we set the new to do input to null right here so it's gonna quickly go ahead and you can see best to do is here but if i go to another one it goes away and then we see the users to do's only so wrapping up this video the whole idea of this video was to tell as developers how we tend to go around the workarounds that we should not be really doing and to understand the http resource as an api which is supposed to help you work with resources for a component when we talk about a resource we are usually talking about some sort of list some sort of data that you want to get in order for your component to work and that's pretty much it you don't have to work around to make it work for the post delete patch mutation that's not what the angular http resource is for and you should keep that in mind when you work with your angular applications the way it's supposed to work you're gonna have better tests you're gonna have lesser workarounds or technical depth and you're gonna make it easier for everyone in the team to maintain the code in the long run easier and that was the purpose of this particular video to show you what you should not be doing with that said i'm highlighting again i'm working on an angular signals book but it contains much much more than actually angular signals it contains a lot of good examples for you to work with angular signals and http resource and much more so you can find the link in the description of this video where it says newsletter.codewithsn.dev and with that said happy coding i'm gonna see you next time